liquid milk. Malt, germinated through the barley, is crunched and mixed with the water. Slowly we heat it up and steps up to 75 degrees. What is happening here? The starch becomes sugar. And the liquid is called wort. No beer yet, no alcohol and no very sweet. Then we pump it over in the clarified stuff. And in here, we are extracting all the multitudes we need. At the end, we even rinse it with hot water from 75 to extract all the multitudes because no sugars, no alcohol, and we are brewing beer, no lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> What's left is this, the brewer's grain. And the brewer's grain is sold to the cattle. The cows adore it. They give more and better milk. Some people say, if you have too much dough, they become mad cows, so you have to be with it. When the clarified water is in the brew kettle again, we add hops, lupino, hops. Not the flowers, but hop pellets. And then we boil it one hour longer, depending on the type of beer. And then we pump it in the whirlpool. It's not one from Phillips. <laughs> and there, all the unnecessary proteins are sticking to the side from the bottom. And then it passes through the heat exchange. When the temperature falls to 20, 25 degrees Celsius, the ideal temperature we need to start fermentation. And then we pump it into two magnificent fermenters that you probably saw on the top of the room when you entered the brewery. And there happens magic, ladies and gentlemen. We add yeast, oxygen, what is happening? Sugar becomes alcohol. Carbon dioxide gases are built to have a sparkling beer and a nice firm foam on top of your glass. <laughs> After seven to ten days, we have a difference that is called beef. Still young, then we pump it in beer packers, transport it to the second part of our brewery, where we write and filter and bottle. That's in a nutshell how we are brewing. Now we're going to see it step by step. And in exactly 40 minutes, you will taste the beef. So the English speakers, you may already move forward to the first row. This is your department, Simon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the lab. Laboratoire Garnier. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst enemy for a brewery and the historical centre are the neighbours. 
That's why we bribe them, we give them free beers. <laughs> now, there's a small group at my steering vessel. In the past, eight to ten people operated this system. They used steering sticks to steer in the ward, used the ring busters to shove it in, and scooped out the planet five ward in buckets. I brought it up to the attic where you have a surface cooler, a cool ship, a huge copper element of 30,000 liters capacity, only to chill. No fermentation, chilling. You can walk in it, maybe. It's empty. Water. Very important element. Water. We have a brand new water supplement in the basement. But always the same question. Are you, do you, did you use water from the canal to brew your beer? We always say no, only for the dark ales and the export version. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, ladies and gentlemen, 90% of all the breweries in the world use regular tap water. But we just need to soften it because the water in Bruges is quite harsh. We have a well, we have one, but we can't use it. We are 11 kilometers away from the North Sea. The water contains too much iron. Not good to prepare it. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, to make one liter beer, we need three liter water. The rest is evaporated. So now the English speakers, you may already move forward into the museum, open the door, go inside and smell. Every other, we have nothing to hide. We are a very transparent brewery. Please, please. Yeah. 